Thank you, Senator Nelson. I want to thank you, Dr. Marshburn, for your service. And, and I'd love to just a ask a question. Uh, what surprised you the most about your time on the space station? Is there something you didn't expect that now four and a half months into it uh, has surprised you? Uh, yes, what surprised me uh, was that how busy and vibrant life and the work here on the space station is. The space station is a hard place to go to sleep because uh, if it's not looking out the window, it is every moment enjoying the effects of zero gravity and especially the work during the day. We are busy as can be in a, in a wonderful way. Uh, we've just, you may know, we've just uh, added uh, up to four comm loops. We can talk to scientists all around the world, and if, for a few days, we've had every loop socked in with conversation with scientists as we do experiments. There's so much going on up here. It's, it's just hard to stop, quite frankly. It's, it's hard to stop and go to sleep and, uh, and um, leave it alone for a while. So that's, very honestly, that is what has shocked me the most. Is there particular research that you're working on now that you're, you're able to discuss that you think is, is exciting or particularly promising? I, actually, I, I don't know where to start. Um, being a doctor, I'll be uh, preferential to, to those experiments. Just yesterday, I was finalizing our, uh, I was the first subject, uh, along with my colleagues, first subjects in the spinal ultrasound study using ultrasound as we all know it on the ground, but in a very novel way, looking at our spines, doing something that's good for human space flight, that is figuring out uh, what is uh, the cause of back pain, which is something that occurs in some astronauts, uh, particularly maybe even back injury when we get back to the Earth and we put our, our spine under compression again, uh, and comparing these ultrasound images to MRI. Now we have ultrasound uh, on the ground, obviously, they don't usually use it for the back, uh, but what's very exciting about this is that we are finding ways to use ultrasound, even being able to visualize the spinal cord uh, in ways that were completely unexpected. There are, are countries and obviously places even in the United States where there are no MRIs, are no CAT scanners, even in emergency rooms where the wait is eight to 10 hours in the middle of a city. This is one example, a small example, but, but one example of how NASA is using a current technology, applying it to a very difficult problem, that is bringing medical care to astronauts where we don't have a hospital up here. And that has developed techniques and processes that can be used on the Earth. That's been done many times. As a matter of fact, I'll just have to say, um, uh, training for every surgical resident in the United States right now uses a technique that was developed by people that were solving a problem for NASA on board the space station that is very central for trauma care in the first hour. Uh, it's saving lives right now. This is a part of training for every resident, surgical resident and surgeon in the U.S. right now. It's been adopted. It came completely from the desire to provide medical care for astronauts. Uh, so yeah, that, that was an ultrasound technique as well. So I, I'm very excited about it as a doctor, but I think it's a great example of what happens when you ask very smart people to do a very hard thing and tell them also you're helping the exploration of the universe. Uh, it's, it's a great combination and wonderful things coming out of that. Terrific. Thank you. Uh